Well, hey there, uh, freshmen and, uh, and or sophomores at St. Mark's uh, High School in uh, Wilmington. Uh, my name is Scott Anthony. Um, and uh, I was supposed to uh, come with a friend of mine, Bob Perrin, and do your freshman and sophomore retreats uh, next Monday, uh, the 20th. And coronavirus has, of course, shut that all down. Now, you may be wondering, you know, like, dude, why are you wearing your sunglasses? You know, are you just that cool? And of course, the answer is yes. But that's not the main reason why I'm wearing my sunglasses. The main reason is because I like to make a lot of videos and put them up on social media. And I realized that uh, I have a hard time looking at the camera and then my eyes are always looking weird and whatnot. So um, I'm wearing my sunglasses. So you just have to deal with that. Uh, hopefully that'll be okay since most of you are probably watching this in your pajamas. So anyway, um, so uh, your principal, uh, Mr. Fertile, good friend of mine. I've uh, been friends with him for probably 20 years, if not more. And uh, <clears throat> he he asked me if I would put together a little presentation for you since we couldn't do the retreat, but something that your teachers could show you and maybe you could reflect on or whatever. And uh, so that's what I'm, I'm here to do. I'm the director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries at St. Joseph Church in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, if I look a little familiar, you might have seen me around St. Mark's uh, back in the fall. I was down there a couple times. Uh, help with the junior class retreat, the senior class retreat. We had a good time doing that. Um, so anyway, um, so here here's the topic that I was asked to talk uh, to you guys about today. Um, basically, like, where is God in all this, right? And it's amazing that you don't even have to really describe what I mean by all this, right? You know, I'm making this video in my office. You guys are watching it at home. Uh, we know what all this is, this unprecedented time, right? This time where like everything's been shut down and, you know, people might be saying, you know, wow, there's all these people getting sick. There's all these people, you know, dying. Um, and it's tragic. I mean, it's just a tragedy and it's a suffering. So where is God in all of this? Um, I guess I want to start with um, something simple and then read you a scripture. So, actually, let's pray first, all right? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, I just ask you to uh, be with me today as I try to present uh, these thoughts to the students, be with the students uh, and teachers that will be watching this and presenting it. Um, Lord, we just ask your Holy Spirit to be upon us and, and just... Um, Touch our hearts today and help us to know that you are present with us uh, at this time and that you are present with us at all times. Mother Mary, we ask for your intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Say, Mark, pray for us. All right. So here's a simple thing. Where is God in all this? Uh, he's where he always is at, right? He is everywhere. He is right there in our hearts. Okay. Um, I want to, want to start with this scripture, right? This is from first John, the book of first John, not the gospel of John, but the book of first John, um, chapter four from chapter four. All right. Uh, so it says, God is love and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. Okay. Then it goes on to say, there is no fear in love for perfect love drives out fear. Okay. And then it goes on to say, we love because he first loved us. And there's a bunch of other good stuff it says about love. That's a great chapter. You could look that up if you want on your own. But perfect love casts out all fear, right? Like right now, people are saying, where has God in all this? Because there's so much unknown. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much fear that's out there. But on the other hand, weren't we living in a lot of fear anyway? I mean, I know when I was in high school, I I was constantly making decisions based out of fear, you know, uh, fear of not being accepted, fear of not being loved, fear of not being noticed, fear of being left out, fear of, you know, um, being made fun of, whatever it was, you know, making decisions. I think so many of us are so busy. We're on this gerbil wheel of life. We're so busy because many times it's out of fear, you know, fear of, of not keeping up, fear of being left behind, fear of... Uh, being strange or weird or different than other people. And I don't think we like it. I, I think that we're, we're really burdened by that a lot of times, right? And so, so where is God in all this? You know, um, 
did God cause this? No, God did not cause this. God does not cause terrible things to happen. Does God allow things to happen sometimes? Yes, because we live in a sinful, fallen world. He respects our free will. And um, bad things happen. There's earthquakes. There's natural disasters. There's disease. There's sickness. Um, there's sin. There's death. Um, why would God allow that? Well, you know, God allows that because he respects our free will, but and he wants to have a relationship with us. And if there's no free will, if there's no freedom, there, there can't be love. There can't be a relationship. And we just talked about that love casts out all fear. But God, here's the amazing thing. Not only can God bring a good out of something evil or bad, but God many times, most times, brings an even greater good uh, out of out of the bad. Um it's kind of like if you ever break, you know, a bone, let's say that you, uh, you know, you break your arm like right here. Okay. And, uh, you know, what they do is they make sure that the bone, the broken parts are lined up together, right? They're touching and then they immobilize your arm in a cast. Uh, they do this so that it's protected. They do that so that it, it, it has time to heal. And our bodies were made by God in such an amazing way that if we give them a long enough time with our bones, when they're broken, give it a long enough time, they will actually heal right on their own. They will grow back together. And here's the amazing thing. Some of you might know this. Some of you might not that after that bone grows back together, the chances of breaking your bone in that exact spot again are basically nothing. You, you, there, there's no chance you're going to do that because when the bone grows back and a place where it's broken originally, it is stronger than had the bone never been broken, right? It's kind of like that, you know, God, God will do these amazing things. Like look at Jesus dying on the cross, right? The worst thing that Satan could have ever done. You know, he, he's like, yeah, I won the victory. I killed, I killed God. I killed the son of God. And then we just celebrated last Sunday no, Satan doesn't have the victory. Satan doesn't have the final word. Death doesn't have the final word, right? Jesus rose. God is more powerful even than death. And so the greater good that God brought out of that suffering of his own son is that we all now have the opportunity to experience his grace, his life, the sacraments, and ultimately the, the, the gates of heaven were opened to us uh, if we choose to follow the Lord to go there. You know, it's an amazing thing, amazing thing. So what does it mean to love, to love like God? Well, it means that we have to despise the things that Jesus despised, and we have to love the things that Jesus loved. Bishop Barron talks about this in his series, Catholicism. I think in the second, uh, second um, episode, when he talks about the teachings of Jesus. Um, what did Jesus despise? Right. Jesus despised four four things. Right. Four main things. Right. Um, uh, again, talked about this in Bishop Barron's video. Wealth, pleasure, power and honor. Wealth, pleasure, power and honor. Um, you know, it makes me think that if we think back to our, our lives before COVID-19. Right. What were the things that we were chasing after the most? Were we chasing after patience, charity, obedience, humility? Those are the things Jesus loved. Or were we, in fact, perhaps chasing after wealth, pleasure, power, and honor? Um, is that maybe where the fear in our lives uh, has come from? Because so often we're chasing for these things that we think are going to actually satisfy our hearts. We think are going to actually make us happy. And yet the more we get of them, the, the, the least happy, the less happy that we actually are, right? You know, you see people that their whole lives are, are built around just becoming wealthy, becoming rich, right? And not that money in and of itself is a, an evil because we all need money, but this this materialism, this constant, you know, drive to have more things, more money. But does that ever really satisfy us? In my experience in, in life and, and the people that I know and the people that I've observed, I don't think that that's true. I don't think that people are inherently satisfied in the core of their heart, um, no matter how much stuff they have. You know, pleasure. Um you know, pleasure, uh, the, the sensual pleasures, the pleasure of, of um, you know, just eating even when we're not hungry, uh, the pleasure of, um, you know, all sorts of things, you know, entertainment and 
and you know living simply for for being uh stimulated all the time you know in our emotions in our uh in our mind uh, you know in our bodies i mean it's just so many people spend their lives you know like hedonistically just going after pleasure living just from one thing to the next thing to the next thing always looking for these things that they think are going to feel good and make them feel good and that somehow that will satisfy their hearts and make them feel happy you know and yet again doesn't seem to completely satisfy our hearts um, we see people always trying to go after power. You know, I, I, we can even see that in the church, right? You see people that are not trying to necessarily build up the kingdom of God. They're trying to build up their own kingdom. Uh, people are trying to carve out places for themselves that they can be, you know, uh, you know, power over other people. Or even when we try to have this power over our own lives, Cardinal Sarah, uh, talks about how, um, man almost hates this idea of, of us being man, you know, that we are, that we are dependent, uh, that we are dependent. We're dependent on God for our own existence. We're dependent on other people for our own existence, uh, and for our lives. And it's almost like we rebel against that. We, we want to have all the power over our own bodies, our own lives, and then we seek to maybe dominate other people, uh, with power. And then, you know, that idea of honor, you know, that we want to be held in esteem by people. We want people to think that we're so awesome and that we're so great. Um, we don't like being in lowly places. We want to be in the high places. So wealth, pleasure, power, and honor. And we, we maybe are running after these things and maybe we didn't even know it, right? But we're running and running and running. And yet we're increasingly running out of fear. We're increasingly unhappy. We're increasingly depressed and feel alone and isolated. And it's like this whole coronavirus was like, bam, full stop, full stop. And all of a sudden the world got more quiet. Our lives became smaller. Our circle became very small. And we had a, now a different kind of fear maybe, right? But what drives that out? That perfect love. And, and what is it that Jesus loves? You know, he loves patience. You know, certainly we are in a time where we can grow in that, that virtue, that fruit of the Holy Spirit of patience. To be patient with doing our schoolwork and patient with our teachers and patient with our students and patient with the people in our families that we're all, you know, stuck together with uh, in this seemingly endless cycle of quarantine. And it's hard to live with people. And, you know, we were used to in our former way of life of, you know, kind of going our own directions all the time and being busy. And, and we have a chance to learn how to be more patient. We have a chance to grow in that virtue of charity, of love, um, of, of putting ourselves second, of living a life of selflessness instead of selfishness, living a life of self-donation as saint pope john paul ii would say you know he would he would go on to say that that you know the the more fully we live a life of self-donation to others the more fully human we become like that is who we were created to be is people that live our lives for other people right um and we have an opportunity to do that during this time to be obedient right and, it, and it's hard you know and and being obedient doesn't mean that we don't uh, that we don't question some of the policies, that, that it's wrong to question some of the things going on. Um, but being obedient to our parents, to our bosses, to our government, to our church leaders, um, you know, still doing our school, still doing our work if we can, um, you know, practicing the social distancing and, and wearing our masks when we're out in public and, and uh, trying to stay home unless we absolutely have to go out. Uh, you know, these type of things, you know, um, for the sake of ourselves, for the sake of our families, for the sake of other people, you know, learning that, that um, obedience, right? Um, thinking of others instead of just thinking of ourselves. And then finally, that, that humility, that humility that, that acknowledges that um, I am not in control. I don't have the power. You know, we want to have the power of our own lives, but we don't. We don't, you know, um, I believe Governor Cuomo from New York said the other day that New York is starting to see the, the curve flatten and they're starting to go down the other side. And he said something along the lines of, um, um, 
you know, God did not cause this to, to st slow down. God did, faith did not cause this to slow down. We caused this to slow down. And yeah, our actions contribute to that, sure. But wow, what an amazing statement for him to make. Like, I was just like, wow, that's, where's the humility? You know, where's the humility to say, we don't have the power. We don't have the power over this virus. You get this virus, it's going to run its course in your life, you know, and, and many people are going to get sick and well, and other people are going to die. And, and, you know, and we're doing everything we can and should be doing everything we can. But, but for us to think that grabbing more power over other people or over our own lives, that's a falsehood. You know, we, we don't, we don't have power over many things in our lives. How, how many times do we, you know, lose our patience, lose our cool, get angry at other people, get frustrated so easily? You know, we don't even have control over our own emotions sometimes, right? We have to have that humility to say, I, I'm dependent. I'm dependent on God. I'm dependent on his grace. I'm dependent on other people. I'm dependent on people to help me to be a better person. I'm dependent on my wife to challenge me when I'm being a, a bad parent. I, I need my children to challenge me when I'm, when I'm not loving them enough. I need friends who will step up and say, Scott, you need to be a better person. Um, you know, we need to have that humility to say, there is a God and I'm not him, to quote the movie Rudy, right? Um, we need that. That's what Jesus loves. The more that we learn to grow in patience, charity, obedience, and humility, the more that we are going to see God in all this. How do we grow in those things? Last point. The necessity for prayer is always there in our life. But now more than ever, when we've been, bam, stopped with so much of the outside activities, the going and going and going, the doing, the doing, the doing. God has said, he says this in scripture, be still and know that I am God. And we need to spend time in prayer not just watching mass online, not just praying together as a family, but spending time in prayer ourselves, you know, reading scripture, just spending time in quiet. Maybe it's in our room. Maybe we take a walk outside or, you know, by ourselves, just share our hearts with God, be present to God, to invite God to come into our hearts and speak to us. Where is God in all this? He's right there. He's right there. And we have this amazing opportunity with all the noise and all the and all the chaos and all the busyness in our life, which has stopped. We have an amazing opportunity to spend that time in prayer, to begin to walk with God or walk more intentionally with God, to take a hard, honest look at our lives and say, what was I, what was I running after? What was I chasing? What am I going to be running after and chasing when this is done? Am I just going to go back to exactly the way it was? Some things need to go back to the way that it was, but I don't think that we can recover from this, which has never happened before, maybe in the history of humanity, and just go back to the way things were. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think we're going to go to a new normal and hopefully that new normal sees us as people who are slower, people who put the brakes on, people who um, don't say yes to everything, people who don't operate out of fear, people who recognize that God was always there, he's there right now, and he always will be there. And we're the ones, we're the ones through our running and our busyness and our noisiness, we're the ones that haven't seen God, we're the ones that aren't seeing God, and we're the ones that will be tempted to not see God when this is done. But if we spend time in prayer, if we yearn after patience, charity, obedience, and humility, we will see God. We will love what he loves. We will become more loving people. And the more that we experience that relationship of love with God, the less we'll be in fear and the less we will doubt where he is. We will know where he is. He will be with us. He will be in our hearts. He will be in our homes, in our families. And um, he will be in our world as he always is. But we just are too busy and noisy to see him sometimes. So I, I hope this was a time of encouragement. I hope that 
um, you guys will um, begin to pray or pray more if you haven't already. Please know that even though I have never met you, I don't know you and you don't know me, that I am praying for you. I'm praying for your families. I hope everybody stays healthy and safe um, and that um, you feel God's presence in your life. Uh, God bless you guys. i um, praying for you. Um, and may our prayer every day be, Jesus, we trust in you. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of the school year. Hope to someday meet you. God bless. Bye-bye.